Congresswoman Underwood, uh, thank you so much for finding the time to talk to the International Council of Nurses, our 130 national nursing associations from right around the world. We know it's an incredibly busy time and please let us offer our congratulations to you on your re-election as well. Um, we know you're a nurse and, and we see and read how proud you are uh, to be a nurse. Can you tell us something about what it means to you to be a nurse? Well, Howard, thank you for having me. I am really delighted to be with you today. You know, being a nurse is just foundational to everything that I do in my career. Um, throughout my career, I have been singularly focused on, you know, protecting the health and protecting the health and well-being of the American people, right? Creating opportunities for them to live their best lives and um, to do it in a way where, you know, they have opportunity um, throughout the lifespan. And, and I think that, you know, as a nurse, there's certainly a unique perspective that I bring to this position, um, having been with patients through some of their most intimate moments, vulnerable moments, through the population perspective that I have now um, in the work that I do every day. Um, there's a camaraderie with the millions of nurses around the world and a trust um, that I have with folks in my community. And I think that um, it's a really special <laughs> perspective and, you know, something that I take, I, I take great care to protect um, my credibility and the advice that I give and, you know, make sure that um, the decisions that I make in my role are ones that allow nurses to continue to serve their communities, their patients, families, um, and allows our profession to grow. So you'll, you'll know that this year is the first ever designated World Health Organization Year of the Nurse. That's right. And, and the midwife. And, and we were all so excited about the celebrations this year. But then the pandemic hit us and we've seen nurses absolutely at the forefront of the, in the eye of that, of that pandemic. What have been your thoughts and your reflections on what the nursing profession, indeed healthcare workers have gone through this year? Well, you know, I think that it's fitting that this is the year of the nurse and the midwife when we have a global pandemic and um, the world has just been focused on the incredible contributions of nurses um, and other healthcare workers, the incredible sacrifice um, that is made regardless on if you're on a COVID unit, right? The fact that we show up every day um, without fail, the level of commitment um, and expertise that we bring to our roles, no matter the setting. Um, there's, you know, at least in America, there's been this like healthcare heroes, essential worker, you know, thing that's happened where there's, you know, profound appreciation. Um, and I think that nurses have um, been acknowledged in that way uh, by society for a long time, but it's more been about how you make people feel and, and less about, you know, what we do every day and our unique roles and the way that our system, just our healthcare system would not function without us, right? I think that that has been brought more to the fore versus just caring, compassionate. I know a nurse, I love my nurses, right? Like that, we, we appreciate that part of it too, but um, it, it's been a little different this year. And, and I think that for society to recognize the complexity of what we bring, it's something that will um, probably certainly influence um, the way that nurses move around our communities in the years to come. Listen, I, th I think you're absolutely right that, that society has, people have got that, that nursing is of course care and compassion, but it's so, so much more. It feels like some of the sort of the traditional myths and attitudes are being busted. But we hear a lot of the nurses who say as well, look, it's been great to have the applause and to have that acknowledgement, but we also need to see change. We need to see sort of real mm. action and real investment and real commitment to the profession for the, for the future. Uh, do you see that? What thoughts might you have about what nursing, what needs to be done to support nursing to, to really uh, enable it to take on a 
leadership role right around in our health systems right around around the world? Well, it, it's become clear that some of the specialty areas that had not received the most attention, thinking about research nurses, um, thinking about public health nurses. Um, I'm a public health nurse. I have been one my entire career. Um, and I actually um, use that as like my professional identity, right? Like, you know, yes, I'm a nurse, but I'm a public health nurse and everybody knows that, right? And there's just so few of us. And so during this time, I believe that public health nurses have been have received the spotlight in such a unique way. Research nurses have been so critical as you know, so many communities have been participating in vaccine trials. Um, as we're learning more about uh, the the SARS-CoV-2 <laughs> virus itself and the way that the coronavirus manifests, as we're learning more about the unique treatment options, right? Nurses are part of every aspect of the global response to this pandemic, whether you are, you know, a critical care nurse, um, a hospice nurse, uh, a home care uh, nurse, um, whether you're an advanced practice nurse, you're doctorally prepared because you're in research or practice, right? Like we're all united um, in this effort. And I think that as we look to the future, um, that there's going to be more willingness for public investment in all aspects of nursing. And I think that that is really where the breakthrough lies um, because you know, at least in the United States, we need advanced practice nurses. We need more nurse researchers. We need that funding to be available. Um, and there's just been an uphill climb for decades. And now I introduced a, a, a bill, um, uh, it's called the FAN Act, F-A-A-N, which you know, offers, I believe, a billion dollars in funding for nursing education, a billion dollars. Do you know how transformative that would be? And we're taking, it, it, it is a legitimate proposal. I, listen, I, it's a phenomenal to, to have secured that amount of money. Um, oh, we haven't secured guess- it yet. We just okay. introduced it. I'm just saying, <laughs> we can have that conversation now, whereas sure. two, five, 10 years ago, it would not have been um, even remotely possible. And, and what were the arguments? What have the arguments been where you've you've got to this point to introduce it that people are, are starting to to recognise that this is a, a an investment which would which would add value where they'd yeah. see that bang for for the, for the buck. I think this is a a key question nurses ask us right the way around the world is how do we change those political mindsets? Well, you know, during the pandemic, we've seen two things happen kind of in in parallel. Um, The consequences of a systemic underinvestment in public health, Mm -hmm. right, where people assumed that they had a local health department that had certain capabilities and they found out that it was almost a shell of its former self. Um, and that those folks had been working all the way at capacity before the pandemic. And so now in many communities, they have just been woefully understaffed, underprepared, and quite frankly, just overwhelmed. Um, So that's been one thing that's happened. The other is we've seen the consequences of allowing uh, communities to have shortages of physicians, of nurses, of other really important healthcare providers. And we are in a rush like a crunch to be able to get healthcare providers to those communities. Now they are often rural, but they're not necessarily remote, right? So I represent a community that's between like 45 minutes and two hours from the city of Chicago. And one of my counties that I represent doesn't have a hospital. So when we talk about rural healthcare, this is a community that's basically suburban, but it's been transitioning over 10 years and now they don't have enough healthcare providers. And so when we come to the table in the Congress and say, this is what it will take to bring the level of um, healthcare expertise to each and every community in this country, we are taken seriously because they're having the same conversation with the physician community. They're having the same conversation with the public health community and nurses have got to be part of this construct for the future of healthcare in America, but also around the world, right? And it's not free. And, you know, what's different, I just want to add one other thing. What's different is that at least in America, nursing education has been largely financed by the individual, Mm. right? We have to figure out a way to pay our tuition, to pull together loans, or what so often happens is that folks will go to community college or a two-year program because it's cheaper. Mm. And then over the course of their career, 
get more education, more um, expertise, more credentials and whatever, right? That is very different than the way that we finance other professions, healthcare professions. And so as we make that shift, society benefits. One of the things that we've been saying this year with the World Health Organization is that the world needs a massive investment in nursing education. Yes. We're, we're six million short now. And with the numbers of nurses who are going to retire over the next yes. few years, that's an even scarier, scarier figure. We, we had an idea about why governments don't look at trying to help people who are losing their jobs in some parts of the economy. We see in, in retail, in transport, in hospitality, people who are losing jobs and worried about the impact on their economies. But providing the education funding to support people to make that switch and to come into to healthcare, but sometimes when we make those sorts of arguments, some of the, some of our nurses might think, well, you know, that's uh, that, those are big political calls, they're big policy calls as well. But but you're a nurse who's who's right in the middle there with this, you know, incredibly influential voice as as well. What would what would you say to those nurses who say, oh, well, I don't know if I can do that. That's, that right. seems like a long way away from from my reality from the, the from the front line. We don't have the luxury anymore of claiming to be apolitical. We can't say someone else will handle that. We have to step up and engage, not only for ourselves and our colleagues, but for our patients, for our communities. Um, and if we do not, we will not have the opportunity to have the outcomes that we wanna see, right? We talk a lot about health disparities. We talk a lot about access to care. We talk a lot about inequality. If we are not participating at the table where those decisions are made, resource allocations, where we are not participating in every room where our voice could carry real weight, then we are failing our colleagues, we are failing our patients, we are failing our communities. We have that responsibility. Um, and I think that you know, a lot of nurses, I think that there is a cultural aspect, mm -hmm. right, that says, you know, this is um, combative, it can be dirty, mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to participate in that. That's one piece. There's another, we're in our personal lives, right? There's some people who say, well, you know, my husband or my partner makes those political decisions for our household, cultural thing. Um, and then there's sort of another uh, line of thought that says, Maybe I'm not good enough. I don't know enough about this. I'm not even fluent in all of this decision making. I don't. I don't speak spreadsheet. What are you talking about? And I think that um, that sometimes keeps us from identifying where we do have expertise and where we are the only ones that can bring values to the conversation because we have that firsthand experience. Mm -hmm. And it's been the absence of these nursing voices, I think, that has allowed for you know some of what's happened to occur, right? If they had heard from us, I think that some of the decisions would have been different along the way. And so let's make that course correction now. And in the year of the nurse and the midwife, let's just all affirm for ourselves that we are gonna take our impact to the global level. I think that's a, it's a fabulous call to action Congresswoman. I mean, I personally, I, I'm not sure how you can possibly make good health policy, health policy, which is going to deliver in practice if you haven't got a nurse and nursing voice, nursing contribution and, and nursing expertise. So we are we are 110 percent with you on uh, on that one. Um, yeah. We're heading into the holiday season. Um, it's not going to feel like much of a holiday for for our nurses and many of our healthcare workers. It's going to be a very different period for all of us as as well, of course. What would your message to nurses uh, around the world be at this time of year? Well, my message is just thank you. Thank you for the work that you're doing, your willingness to sacrifice time away from family and friends, um, you know, different traditions this year, um, to be able to show up for folks who literally have no one. Um, on many of our units and in many of these wards, Family and friends aren't welcome because it's not safe. Mm -hmm. um, and your willingness to continue to do this work that is so often grueling and painful, um, sometimes thankless, um, 
you are just extraordinary. And I see you, so many of us see you and are just in awe, truly. So this is gonna be tough, um, but I hope that you draw strength from one another um, and you know your commitment that you've made to serve during this time of such unbelievable consequence. Um, and take good care of yourselves. It's okay to sit in the feelings and reflect on how hard it is because it is hard. This is extraordinary what we are fighting through right now. Um, extend yourself some grace. And I know that together we'll be able to get through this really tough time. Congresswoman, thank you so much for, for your time, but more than that, for your inspiring words, um, for your belief, and, and for the fact that you are showing exactly in your practice, in what you do, um, that nurses can do this. We've got this and we can do this. We need to believe, we need to have a confidence, uh, and the world isn't going to be a healthier place without us, without our contribution. That's right. Um, thank you for your time. I hope so much that we may be able to, to talk, uh, talk again and you'll be able to talk with nurses around the world again next year. But uh, at this time, let me also, on behalf of the International Council of Nurses, um, wish you a, a restful, a peaceful, a safe uh, holiday season. Um, and let's all hope and pray for a better year next okay. year. Congresswoman Underwood, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Good to be with you. Thank you.